so velicham is a tamil language where tamil is a language spoken in southern most uh, state of india called tamil nadu the idea behind the name is to we would like to light up the lives of the semi urban and rural people um, in india he comes from a different background so he is a social worker basically so he has been um, working for the community since uh, you know three decades Hey there and welcome back to the Beyond Product podcast. I'm your host Moshe Mikanovsky. In this podcast, we're diving deep into what goes into making a truly successful and impactful digital product. We're exploring the unspoken, the behind the scenes, and everything under the hood of product development. Now, digital products are changing our worlds in so many ways. Our guest today is using technology to help people with lesser accessibility to financial means to become entrepreneurs and support their families. Please give a warm welcome to Raul Nagarajan from Velichan Finance. Velichan Finance is an award-winning non-bank financial company or NBFC, uh, and they're helping people in rural and semi-urban uh, India. Offering a spectrum of loans, Velichan Finance is dedicated to customizing financial solutions that cater to the distinctive needs of these communities. What truly really distinguishes Velicham is its innovative software meticulously designed to facilitate rapid and accessible credit for the people of semi-urban and rural India. This year, they were named Best Fintech NBFC of the Year by B2B Infomedia. As an executive director of Velicham, Raul is responsible for the company's strategic decisions and fostering its growth through technology and business development initiatives. Raul, I'm so happy to have you with me today on the show. Pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for having me, and thanks for the introduction as well. Thanks, Moshe. Absolutely, it's very exciting, you know, to always uh, see entrepreneurs, and 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 you are an entrepreneur yourself, but you're helping other people in rural areas that are entrepreneurs. So it's always really exciting. And um, Velicham, it, it's a very unique name, and it has a meaning in Tamil, right? Well, what does it mean? Yeah, correct. Um, so, Velicham is a Tamil language where um, Tamil is a language spoken in southern most uh, state of India called Tamil Nadu. Um, so, Velicham meaning light. Uh, the idea behind the name is to we would like to, uh, you know, light up the lives of the semi-urban and rural people um, in India by giving them mm-hmm. the credit uh, access. So, yeah, the, basically it means light. That's amazing. Just by uh, the name itself is very inspiring like those light bulbs. So <laughs> I, I, I really like that name. Um, so so let's let's start diving in a bit about yourself and about Velicham, and then we'll go into lots of details here today. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so tell me so tell me first about yourself. Who who are you? Thank you. Um, so myself, Rahul Nagarajan. So like you said, I am executive director at Velicham Finance. So um, mm-hmm. I've made two responsibilities of uh, managing the technology initiatives as well as uh, uh, business development. Um, Mm-hmm. Just quick, quick background about me. I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, then I did my master's in uh, management and business in um, um, UTD. Then I worked with a firm called um, Auto Global. It's a consulting firm. I worked there uh, and I managed experience management and operation excellence. Um, then I moved to Elitium Finance as uh, uh, executive director. Um, quick back. Um, apart from this, um, I have worked on several, you know, microfinance institution in India. I worked with the Mahashakti Microfinance. Um, there also, I worked in the OPEX department. So my experience mostly comes from operational excellence and experience management. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm putting together all the uh, knowledge I've learned to build Belichum into a bigger, um, bigger company. Yeah. Excellent. And then let's uh, dive a bit more into Belichum uh, finance. So. Your father, um, actually, he is the story behind this, I believe. Correct, yes. So, so, so tell he, us a bit about that. He comes from a different background. Um, so he is a social worker, basically. So he's been um, working for the community since, uh, you know, three decades. He started a NGO, non-government organization in 1987 called Bharati Women Development Center. So that's mm-hmm. dedicated to developing uh, women in the rural India. Um, when he started the um, NGO in 1997, he was working with the government of India as well as my state government of Tamil Nadu for, um, you know, 20 years developing, you know, b- doing capacity building for the women, teaching them to start small micro enterprises in their village, things like that. Um, in later, you know, in the early 2000 to 2005, 2008, he was helping those, you know, we call them JLG and SLGs, 
you know, it's group of like, you know, five to 25 women, they form as a group in their local community. And they start small business within the groups and they try to, you know, generate revenue through this. Those are like income, small income generation activities. Um, in order to help, you know, start those activities, my dad was helping them connecting between the banks and to help them get some loans from the bank. Uh, but it was very difficult in 2008 when the recession um, came. The, the women in the rural areas were not getting enough uh, you know, credit access. So he was kind of forced into uh, this lending mints uh, business. So he decided, okay, let me start my own uh, funding so I can provide credit access to those uh, people who are in need. Uh, that's mm-hmm. how we, st- we started lending business in 2008-9. Um, then we, um, it was actually, um, you know, very small level till 2016. 2016 is when we started to, you know, we were working in very small districts, three to four districts at that time. Then in 2016, mm-hmm. okay, you know, we have the bandwidth. Uh, so we can expand. Then we started expanding to uh, other uh, states and districts. Now we have a presence in three states. Uh, we are expanding to other states as well. Now we have more than 35 branches. We have team member of 250 plus uh, in the organization. So um, that's the you know short about his journey. Yeah, that's a very nice growth. And I love that story that coming from social needs and social helping people to finding that niche of how can you help someone socially but with their financial needs. Uh, yes. so, so tell us a bit about, you know, what are the services and type of products that you offer at Village and Finance to, and, and who are your clients? Sure. Um, so the main product is, you know, of course, loans. Uh, we don't offer higher ticket size loans. The loan ticket size are um, smaller. In INR, it's anywhere between 75,000 as a minimum loan size to uh, 5 lakhs as the you know, maximum loan size. How much is it about in uh, dollars? Um, $800 to maybe um, $8,000 maximum. Um, yeah, roughly. So these are small loans for for businesses. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, most of mm-hmm. my average loan size would be around um, two thousand dollars. Is my average loan size. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my customer segment is not from urban places. Most of 80, 90 percent of my customer segment is in semi-urban or uh, you know rural places, tier three, tier mm-hmm. four uh, uh, places in India. So my loan mainly focuses on three things. Uh, one is agriculture industries as well as agri allied industries then we call them um, msme loan micro medium small industries so those are the three main areas that we target um, or we tend to help those these are all unsecured loans um, um, there's no collateral attached to it um, so the idea is to when you look at uh, when you look at the population that we serve the credit access is not easily available people cannot just pull up a smartphone and apply for a loan and get it immediately uh, they need mm. assistance to apply for the loan that's where we come in uh, we handheld them throughout the process to get the credit access i see uh, so what would be like um, a typical type of uh, company or organization or individuals that uh, give me an example of the type of of a business so all of our loans are individual loans even though we focus on um, um, you know helping the micro enterprises it's usually owned mm-hmm. by the individual um, and we don't mm-hmm. since the loan size is maximum of 8000 um, the companies or you know the industries approaches or we approach is usually like very small level industries whose uh, you know um, revenue would be like you know 10000 to 15000 um, usd per month or um, mm-hmm. even less than that i'm you know the higher number would be like 10000 to 15000 um, usd per month i'm talking about the revenue right. so the industry we approach is usually um, um, like in a small scale um, um, you know with three to four employees uh, would be employed in that industry and we have a lot of agriculture background as well when it comes to our customer so the southernmost india is known for uh, you know paddy um, paddy agriculture there's huge amount of uh, paddy industry as well as you know, we have area which uh, manufacture a lot of tea leaves, as well as the you know uh, vegetable cultivation. So those customers are served uh, from um, agri product, but most all our loans are individual loans and individual borrowers. Yeah. So 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 basically, you know, we always think about entrepreneurs as uh, these uh, people that are creating uh, large companies or have the ideas of create large, large companies. But even uh, you know, um, smaller enterprises like that, it's still, they still have to go through all the, uh, uh, how do they run the business and how do they fund the business and how they're able to actually create um, livelihood for their families. And what fascinates me is really how India was able to create this um, uh, environment and infrastructure for um, technology to, to be um, possible for that. 
But uh, let's wait with that a bit. I, I do want to, to touch base on that because that's really fascinated me. Um, but in general, just to a bit uh, more understanding of, of your services, so you have like uh, created a fund or you're creating a fund of uh, resources. Uh, is it your own or is it like from uh, investors that you are getting those funds from? Sure, yeah. Uh, definitely, like you said, that's a very interesting topic, how India has been uh, um, doing recently with mm-hmm. technology and building. Yeah, definitely we can touch yeah. this. Um, to come back to how we rise the fund um, to lend, um, there are a few, three, four pieces that I would touch upon it, um, um, when we when it comes to fundraising. Um, you know, most NBFCs are um, what Belichum is. We are a non-deposit taking NBFC. We don't take deposit from the customer. Um, so that's that's the t- license type that we have. So as a non-deposit NBFC, I should not collect money from my customers. No savings, nothing like that. So I have to raise all my fund as a debt um, from other investors or I have to put in my own money. Um, there, mm-hmm. there are two pieces. One thing is either I can lend my own money or I can act as a business correspondent to the other bigger NBFCs or banks. So... Mm-hmm. When it comes to business correspondence, I develop a partnership with the bigger banks and NBFCs. So what I do is I act as a middleman. So I go talk to the customer, clients, people who need the money, and I connect them with the bigger NBFCs. Like I do the everything, the process, you know, filling out the application, from, um, um, doing the credit underwriting, um, and you know, making sure the applicant is the right applicant. Then I help the fund comes from the bigger companies to the you know client. And I take care of the collection as well. Every month we take care of the collection, pay the money back to the, you know, the one who lender, the bigger lender. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I take commission from that. So that's one type of raising the fund and, you know, helping the mm-hmm. clients get the money. Um, the other type is where I have to raise own funds. Um, the only way is I go out to the bigger companies, bigger NBFCs, banks um, saying, hey, this, we are NBFC here in South India. And this is what we are doing. This is what we have. Um, why don't you give me a you know bigger ticket size? My average ticket size is like I said, eight thousand rupees, ten thousand rupees. I go for a million dollar loan. So I get a million dollar loan from a bigger NBFCs banks, and mm-hmm. then I split that into hundred or thousand loans and give it to my. But this one one tricky part to it. I just want to touch base on that. The the limitation when it comes to rising the debts uh, is how much capital you have. It's not easy for you to go to a um, uh, you know, uh, you were lender to ask for like million dollar. If you want five, let's say you want four million dollar, you need to put in your one million dollar. So the RBA, the regulatory organization in India says, this, there's a you know three x, four x, five x, seven x is the maximum that you can leverage things like that. The RBA sets some certain rules. How many mm-hmm. times you can leverage? If you have one rupee, then you can get five rupees, six rupees. But the normal industry standard is. The industry looks anything about 3.54 as a risky leverage. So if you have one rupee, you can borrow four rupees. So if that's how it is work, I put in certain amount from my own pocket into the company and I leverage four times outside for that. Okay, so yeah, that's um, that sounds like a um, very interesting uh, model there. But um, le- let's talk a bit more about the technology. Mm-hmm. Um, where does um, technology is um, helping you in your strategy to, yes. you know, grow your business and, and enable it? Correct. So um, since we are in the side of fundraising, let me explain how the technology plays a very, very critical role uh, in terms of fundraising. So I explained yeah. two models. One is rising debt. Another thing is doing the business correspondence. So when mm-hmm. it comes to connecting my clients to the bigger, you know, um, NBFCs, uh, me acting as a business cl- correspondent, the technology plays a crucial role. Uh, because mm. back in, you know, let's say two, three years back, I have to talk to the customer, get the file, email all the details and get the approval through email or even the phone call. It is very, very tedious process. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the technology in place, my software is integrated using the API with the NBFC that I'm going to act as a bigger lender. And, you know, as soon as I onboard a customer in my technology, in my software mobile app, I push the file, you know, I push all the customer details and all the details are collected to the, uh, you know, using the API to the lender and everything happens over, you know, in a minute, it gets approved immediately. I can, you know, that process is solved. Um, you know, it takes out three, four days of work into like, you know, a couple of minutes of work. So that's, that's a big help um, when it comes to, um, you know, technology, when it comes to fundraising. And on mm-hmm. the other side also, when I raise debts, um, there's a lot of, lot of reporting goes on. You know, no one is going to give you a million dollar money without looking into the numbers. So when you have the right technology, you can share all the details, reports, you know, monthly monitoring, weekly reports, everything, 
you know, in, seamlessly without, you know, breaking your head, working on those Excel reports, you know, spending hours and hours of time. Now everything is shared seamlessly, whatever, you know, we, we can give them a portal, we give them a portal, like, you know, client portal, funder portal, they can open their portal, see how the portfolio is doing, how data are, you know, going which direction. So that gives them a lot mm-hmm. of trust that, you know, that helps them to, you know, top up the loans, you know, have a good relationship. So that's in terms of fundraising. So of course, in terms of uh, serving the you know customer, it's a it's a definitely a breakthrough product. Um, um, you know, back in those days, uh, it's two three years before, it, you know, whenever I I talk about uh, uh, technology, how we are onboarding customer into mobile app, you know, this is two thousand twenty three. Maybe it seems like it is too late. Why we are developing mobile app um, now in two thousand twenty three? But what we have to consider here is the customer segment that we are serving. Um, I know still. You know, Recently, I read a report, you know, the smartphone penetration is still under uh, maybe 60, 70 percentage throughout the India. But if you look at the area that we are working in, it probably less than 30 or 40 percentage people who owns a smartphone. So that's the segment mm-hmm. we are talking about. We are not talking about the, uh, you know, top uh, slice of India where everyone has access to everything. We are not, the customer doesn't come from the urban places or any of those metropolitan cities. So we are serving mm-hmm. areas uh, where uh, internet penetration is low, where the smartphone penetration is low, which has been changing rapidly in the last two, three years. That's the main reason why we are developing all this product, but it's a very long learning curve. So keeping that in mind, moving those customer to a digital journey um, solves a lot of problems and um, gives them a huge advantage, gives them the money when they actually need it. The timely credit is very important. Um, not just for business, you know, some bank loans, not, you know, speaking out of village, some other organization working for, you know, health and em- health loans, education loan, emergency loan, those money has to reach the customer on time. So this technological development helps, uh, you know, it, it, the previous two years back, the tax used to be more than three weeks to get a loan approved. Even now, even now, if you approach any um, conventional like banks, which operates in those area, it takes more than a month to get a loan approved. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to, to maybe take that as a segue to start talking a bit more about what uh, we, we were talking about before, about India uh, technology um, upgrade, if you may, or technology boom in the past decade. Um, mm-hmm. It's really interesting to me because I'm used to, you know, North America. I live in Toronto for many, many years. Before that, I live in the U.S., and we know the limitations of our financial institutions over here. And we also, but they're not moving very fast. They're moving quite slowly. Uh, you still have sometimes to go to the bank to do the specific things. Uh, there is mobile apps for a long time already, like uh, several years already. I don't know. And they're improving. But there are still some things that are, could be still quite annoying between them, especially if you want to... Uh, uh, move funds between banks or create new uh, uh, loans or stuff like that. Um, and then when I was um, doing a bit of research, you know, uh, on India, preparing for this episode, I was like quite amazed to see that India almost took it as a national project to okay. create this ability for every financial institution to be able to connect with every uh, person in India. And we're talking billions of people here. So uh, there is the India stack, um, and it has several components in it. Maybe you can explain a bit to our listeners, you know, what what that is, and then le- and then we can discuss how that help you uh, with uh, building your business. Sure. Yeah. So speaking of the technology stack, um, um, India's technology stack, it's just not you know I'm not an expert with other things because India has uh, the stack not just into fintech. Uh, they have started with other areas as well. Uh, but majorly in fintech, mm-hmm. uh, one key get through is UPI. But before UPI, I just want to touch upon the Aadhaar. Um, Aadhaar is the base for everything, the unique identification number for each and every citizen of India. So everything is tied to Aadhaar. Um, so that's that's how India started its process. Then when it comes to financial sector, India put up an organization called NPCA. Um, so most of the financial sector, you know, financial stack that they build even... Um, um, UPI or BPPS or NACH, everything comes under the NPCA. NPCA function as like any other company. It has its own team, uh, but it comes, of course, comes in the RBI and the government of India. So they have built this complete technology stack, in, um, including UPI, to help all the financial institution. And for uh, UPI is free for everyone to, you know, UPI cross, UPI started doing more than like 5 billion transactions in the 
in a month so it's 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 been it captured almost 60 75 if i'm not wrong more than 70 percentage of um, every transaction which happens in um, india right now yeah and just for our audience upi stands for unified payment interface so it Correct. does unified all the different payment uh, services i believe um and and there are some countries also that india is talking with to adopt it as their standard or to integrate with it so you will be able to expand it outside of india Correct. and other couple of things it's very secure than whatever we were using uh, very secure than um, credit card or debit card and anything we do because everything happens with uh, a pin and you know the authentication process is uh, very seamless um and it's free of course you know whenever we do a transaction with visa or mastercard or anything um the the customer or the store owner has to pay a couple of percentage to the you know visa or whatever transaction we are using but with upi the upi is completely government subsidized it's completely free um so it's it's a huge incentive for um, everyone because the markup of any product goes down at least by like you know a couple of percent or you know less than 1% so that's a breakthrough and there is no limitation on number of transaction um, there is no limitation on um, you know how often you can do it things like that so that's a breakthrough and all of the product like you know the natch pppas is excellent stack that they uh, you know npc have built uh, i don't want to spend more time over talking about each product but those stack what helps all the fintech institution to get in touch with the customer um even now the npca is testing a new product what they are doing is um they are building a place like a technology stack where you have access to all the information of the customer who needs loans so instead of us like a financial institution going into multiple places and trying to find the you know um, customer details we can just have one api integration with that platform and let's say you are approaching for a loan i can go to that platform you know with the api call get all the information about you and approve or reject a loan or take a decision based on that so that's a breakthrough which happened in the last two years uh, the reason why everyone is taking so long to approve a loan is because there's no digital presence of those customer before now everything is getting digitalized if you want to access any information it is available digitally so that's the huge advantage that the government has built for all the financial institution um, in the last two years and- no that, that that's great and and i believe that part of it is also um ekyc so electronic know your client or mm-hmm. know your customer so and and you mentioned how they can access this uh, document um remotely um but so so here you have a risk and you said this is unsecured uh, loans that you're giving them uh so you are taking the risk when you are giving them those loans and yes. this technology is helping you verify that the risk uh, reduce your 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 risk basically yeah yeah effectively uh, when you have more information and your um, your information is you know from comes from a source of truth you know just just to give an example you know let's take aadhar card um anyone can show a aadhar card it can be photoshopped with this uh, nowadays with the recent ai technologies you know anyone can create that piece of document even let's take ssn or any any piece of document can easily um, create it and manipulate it but with the technology you know right now uh, with the te- the application that we have built we have part- we have partnered with the organization you know which udai is the one who's managed the other so what we do is the udai is our source of to as soon as i approach a customer customer gives me the aadhar card with the aadhar number i pull all the details corresponding to the customer directly from the government server so the place where i get my source of truth is actually validated uh, you know uh, data so that helps to reduce the risk a lot so um, that's that's a huge difference uh, you know it helps overall when the risk is reduced um, obviously the interest rate goes down when you know when you see a you see higher risk the interest rates come goes up um, so that benefits the customer a lot um, do you have actually information about how many um additional clients you're able to support or to approve because of this ability of this technology like in uh, the industrial or architectural uh sector how does that um like before and after do, do you have a sense of that yeah definitely um i can talk about just velicham and i you know, so i can give you a precise number yeah. i can also talk about the industry um yes sure. with velicham um let's say the volume of application that we process in a month 
as you know there is no comparison because it went up by like more than 85 percentage um it's it's mm-hmm. not a easy process without all these api to process for in order from you know we call them the credit officer who analyze the application and approves or rejects or take a call on the loan it takes at least an hour more than an hour in some cases to approve a loan to analyze everything but now it takes less than three to five minutes you know that's the wow. maximum time that a person would spend on that um, so mm-hmm. there are three, four stakeholders touch upon each and every application. So the amount of application we can do more in a month is like, that's that's a lot. It's just for Village mm-hmm. Um And the other thing, the other side of the story is, let's say like 10 to 20, 30 percentage of the customer base, we won't be able to sow before because they don't have any solid proofs um, like, you know, back then. But those customers now has access to the loans because of these technological development, because of this technological app comes into the play. The, without this, there is no way that you can find um, um, anything about uh, uh, their uh, you know, credit history or anything like that. Now that has changed. So not just how much we can do in terms of the throughput, um, uh, mm-hmm. the, the market has increased because of this. Mm, I see. So, you know, what really amazes me about that is how this initiative by India created a whole new platform for businesses like yourself Mm -hmm. to help, you know, individuals uh, and to help business, other businesses. So um, is that only available for people in India to create and work in this ecosystem or can anyone comes from you know, anywhere in the world and say, you know, this is a great opportunity. I can integrate with this system and start also giving loans. Um, yes. So um, legally speaking, um, yes, you can start a NBFC if you get license from the RBI. Um, um, so that's the first thing you need an NBFC license to start uh, this funding mm. business. But sure. you know, speaking of that, lending is not just done by um, NBFCs. There are other institutions who does it. But predominantly you need the nbfc license but you know rbi has been very strict on this uh, there are a lot of uh, mobile apps you know, when there is a good thing can be achieved there's also bad things comes along with it so recent times rbi has been very strict on this because there's a lot of mobile application a um, lot of organization comes up and kind of in an abusive manner as well where they get excess customer details and um, um, you know when the customer don't repay the loan there are strict norms about how you can approach the customer uh, ways you can collect the money um, and when to approach the customer and what you can do, what you shouldn't do. Uh, so yeah. when you have to follow the compliance and the instruction given by the Reserve Bank of India very clearly. Uh, so the reason times RBI has been very strict on that. And we have seen uh, Chinese app, you know, investors, um, invested apps has been seized and um, has been um, frozen um, recently because of uh, collecting unnecessary customer information and storing them and contacting them, um, which is not instruct how RBI instructed. So those are the things that we have to stay away from. Um, compliance is something that is non-negotiable. Um, always you have to put the compliance first. Um, um, everything comes after compliance. There is no negotiation when it comes to that. So as long as you follow those guidelines and system, anyone can enter into this. Yeah, like any other uh, emerging technology, uh, and I see this as an emerging technology that enables other technologies to come in. Uh, it has um, the it needs the time to mature and to uh, sift out all the bad players and the good players are coming up, and of course be secure and be ethical about it and stuff like that. So, so that can be actually something that I can see also as a strategy for you in your uh, competitive advantage over uh, over others. How do you make it ethical? How do you make it uh, secure enough for your clients and and trustworthy for the clients? Uh, because from that you will you will have success. Yeah, absolutely. Being ethical um, in 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 any business is important. When it comes to lending business, it is very very important. Um, you know, you have to follow the uh, you know ethical ethical guidelines as well as government guidelines. And we have taken a lot of steps even uh, when we build the technological stack. You know, how secure is the system? You know, you are collecting a lot of credit information about any customer. You know, all the KYC data are collecting. You know, you have to store it securely and handled it securely and shared it securely. You know, we've been sharing those data with other lenders and DZs. So that has to be given the highmost priority um, when it comes to that. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, that's um, again. It's really fascinating me because I'm I'm learning a lot about this ecosystem, and um, I'm trying to compare it, you know, with other ecosystems similar to that. And I started by saying that here in North America, things are moving quite slow on the financial side of things. Um, we are bar burdened, I think, by a lot of legacy systems and a lot of uh, old-fashioned way to do things. Uh, do you see in the industry um, in India, um, um, no, in addition to your service, but do you see other people, how they come up with some brilliant new ways for people to interact with financial institutions or to get um, access to funds? Yeah, it's been a, the, I mean, last two years been like a breakthrough year. Every month there are new technologies when it comes to fintech has been coming up. Um, the recent things has been, you know, I just I want to mention a few things. Uh, um, there's a lot of new banks coming up um, in the recent, um, um, the recent time. Uh, you know, from my industry, what we are trying to work on, you know, there's something called you know, account aggregator. Um, that's a huge um, advantage for any player. Um, if you want to just talk a little bit about that, um, let's say a customer is applying for a loan and bank statement analysis plays a major loan. We see their bank statement to analyze the income and expense, things like that. But um, the account aggregator helps with that. With the customer concern, you know, with the OTP concern, I can directly contact the bank where he is holding the bank account and I'll directly get the bank statement from the bank. Again, it's a, I'm getting the bank statement from the source of truth. And not just from one bank, let's say he's holding it from three or four different banks. I can pull same customer uh, bank statement from four different banks at the same time, consolidate together, do analyze and get, you know, get a good idea of his income expense and how much he can repay, things like that. So that's a huge breakthrough when it comes to that. And um, new banks, yeah. new banks are, you know, it's just new banks are more like a very pretty phase of, uh, you know, the, um, the old conventional banks. They are not just, they, are, they don't have license. They are not banks. What they do is they just tie up with um, banks, you know, who has a bigger portfolio, things like that. Um, you can access all the bank um, products through their fancy apps. So it's easy for you to do it. So you have to, you don't have to go to the bank or go to the, you know, old legacy systems and try to find where is what, you know, things like that. So they'll give you a new face to the old bank. So those, it, it's just, you see every, Every one month, you see some new products coming up. Um, it's 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 been happening in the last two years. I think there is a lot that um, banking um, people and financial people from India can teach us here, because I wish some of those things I could have done like right away with my banking systems over here. Uh, sometimes it is very painful. I can tell you that. So yes. uh, when it when it comes to fintech, yes, we uh, India has been doing a ground uh, groundbreaking work. Um, um. Yeah, and, and I'm sure there is also um, some studies around that, uh, you know, to 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 learn from from that experience. But it seems to me that the the uh, core idea here is that the government and the institutions come together to create something as a platform, um, yes. almost. Um, Financial as a uh, FAAS, you know, financial as a service or financial platform as a service to enable everyone else to, to um, you know, uh, real time access to their information and real time access to things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That partnership works very well. Yeah, correct. Well, I don't really want to get into politics, but, you know, in different countries, politics drives everything. And is it controlled by the government or is it more privately controlled? Yes, it's still it is a concern. You have access to such information digitally. Like I said, how it is handled and who has access, who can see it. Everyone, like you said, not every organization is ethical, you know, 